Hello and welcome to today's course. Today we're talking about the holy days of obligation, but let us first begin with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Catholic Church, holy days of obligation or precepts are days on which the faithful are expected to attend Mass and engage in rest from work and recreation according to the third commandment. The expectation is attached to the holy day, even if transferred to another date, as sometimes happens in the Roman Rite. And the Roman Rite is the most common ritual family for the ecclesiastical services in the Latin Church. There are many other rites, and we will talk about those in another course. However, in some countries, a dispensation is granted in such circumstances, and a dispensation is the exemption from the immediate obligation of the law in certain cases. In this law, we are talking about the obligation to attend Mass on Holy Days. Some countries can get a dispensation, meaning the lay people in those countries won't have to go to Mass on those days. Moving on, let's talk about Holy Days in the Latin Church. The Holy Days of Obligation for Latin Church Catholics are indicated in Canon 1246 of the 1983 Code of Canon Law, and the Code of Canon Law is the fundamental body of ecclesiastical laws for the Latin Church. So in Canon 1246 states, quote, Sunday, on which by apostolic tradition the Paschal Mystery is celebrated, must be observed in the Universal Church as the primordial Holy Day of Obligation. The following days must also be observed, the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Epiphany, the Ascension, the Body and Blood of Christ, Holy Mary, the Mother of God, her Immaculate Conception, her Assumption, St. Joseph, St. Peter and St. Paul the Apostles, and all saints. With the prior approval of the Apostolic See, however, the Conference of Bishops can suppress some of the Holy Days of Obligation or transfer them to a Sunday. All right, so now we're going to talk about the order of these 10 holy days placed in order on the liturgical calendar. And the first day in the liturgical year for a holy day would be the 8th of December because, remember, the liturgical calendar starts with Advent and with the preparing for the birth of Jesus. All right, so in the 8th of December, we have the Immaculate Conception. The 25th of December, we have the Nativity, which is Christmas. On the 1st of January, we have the Holy Mother of God. On the 6th of January, we have the Epiphany. On the 19th of March, we have the Solemnity of St. Joseph. Thursday, the 6th week of Eastertide, we have the Ascension. Thursday after Trinity Sunday, we have Corpus Christi. The 29th of June, we have St. Peter and Paul. The 15th of August is the Assumption, and the 1st of November is All Saints. There used to be many more Holy Days of Obligation, but with the motu proprio of, the, of July 2nd, 1911, Pope Pius X reduced the number of such non-Sunday Holy Days from 36 to 8. And a motu proprio is simply an official act taken by the Pope or somebody that the Pope has put in charge. So Pope Pius X made an official act changing the non-Sunday Holy Days from 36 to 8. And then after 1911, two more feasts were added to those eight, which was the uh, Body and Blood of Christ, which is Corpus Christi, and St. Joseph's Feast Day. So the present list, the list that we have now, was established in Canon 1247 of the 1917 Code of Canon Law, but that was changed to Canon 1246 in the current Code of Canon Law. And you can find the Code of Canon Law. It is free to read on the Vatican's website. So you can go over there and check it out. All right. So even before the time of Pius X, the bishops in many countries had obtained the Holy See's approval to dis diminish the number of non-Sunday Holy Days of Obligation, making the total fewer than 36. Today, too, Episcopal conferences have availed themselves of the authority granted to them to reduce such days to the 10 mentioned above. And an Episcopal conference 
also known as a bishop's conference, is an official assembly of the bishops of the Catholic Church in a given territory. So the, uh, the bishop's conferences were getting approval to lower the number, which was 36 before 1911. The, the number of holy days that the lay people were required to attain was much lower than 36 even before 1911. But it was an official act by Pope Pius X that changed it down to eight, and now we've gone back up to 10. But bishop conferences can ask for even less days if they would like. All right, non-Sunday holy days of obligation all have the rank of solemnity, and a solemnity is a feast of the highest rank. Accordingly, if in ordinary time one of the holy days falls on a Sunday, the Sunday celebration gives way to it. But the Sundays of Advent, Lent, and Eastertide take precedence over all other solemnities, which are then transferred to another day. So, for example, the Feast of the Sacred Heart may fall on St. Peter and Paul's feast day. In that case, the Sacred Heart feast would take precedence. So, St. Peter's and Paul's would be moved to another day. Another example would be if the if uh, the Immaculate Conception or some other day fell on a Sunday, but it was Advent or Lent or something like that, that day would need to be moved to a Monday or a Saturday because Advent, Lent, and Easter Sundays take precedence. They are more important than the Holy Days. Now, very quickly, we're going to talk about working Holy Days. While Episcopal, Episcopal conferences may suppress holy days of obligation or transfer them to a Sunday, some of them have maintained as holy days of obligation some that are not public holidays. For most people, such days are normal working days, and they therefore cannot be observed with an obligation to abstain from work. However, the faithful remain bound by the obligation to participate in Mass. For these, for these days which have been referred to as working holy days, churches usually have a special schedule with mass available outside the normal working hours or on the preceding evening. In times past, holy days would often be referred to as days of single or double precept, with those of double precept requiring the faithful to both attend mass and to abstain from work, whereas a day of a single precept would permit people to go to work. And we have an example in Ireland, Christmas and St. Patrick, are public holidays and holy days of obligation. So there are five holy days where the people in Ireland have to go to work because those holy days aren't public holidays. And that is basically it for the introduction to holy days of obligation. What are they? Well, holy days of obligation are days which the faithful are expected to attend mass and engage in rest from work and cre recreation according to the third commandment. And there are 10 of them according to Canon 1246. And they are uh, right here. The Nativity, the Epiphany, the Ascension, the Body and Blood of Christ, Holy Mary, the Mother of God, the Immaculate Conception, the Assumption, St. Joseph, St. Peter and St. Paul the Apostle, and all saints. And that is it for our lesson today. Next, we're going to be going into the specifics of Holy Days in the United States. And then we're going to talk about each Holy Day separately. So please check out those other videos and lessons as well. Until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.